John Christopher Depp II is an American actor, producer, and musician. He is the recipient of various accolades, including a Golden Globe Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award, in addition to nominations for three Academy Awards and two British Academy Film Awards. Depp made his debut in the horror film A Nightmare on Elm Street, before rising to prominence as a teen idol on the television series 21 Jump Street. In the 1990s, Depp acted mostly in independent films, often playing eccentric characters. These included What's Eating Gilbert Grape, Benny and June, Dead Man, Lonnie Brasco, and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Depp also began collaborating with director Tim Burton, starring in Edward Scissorhands, Edward and Sleepy Hollow. In the 2000s, Depp became one of the most commercially successful film stars by playing Captain Jack Sparrow in the swashbuckler film series Pirates of the Caribbean. He received critical praise for Finding Neverland, and continued his commercially successful collaboration with Tim Burton with the films Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Corpse Bride, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, and Alice in Wonderland. In 2012, Depp was one of the world's biggest film stars, and was listed by the Guinness World Records as the world's highest paid actor, with earnings of 75 million US dollars. During the 2010s, Depp began producing films through his company, Infinitum Nihil, and formed the rock supergroup Hollywood Vampires with Alice Cooper and Joe Perry. Depp, was married to actress Amber Heard from 2015 to 2017. Their divorce drew media attention as she alleged that he had been abusive throughout their relationship. Depp sued Heard for defamation in 2019 after she wrote an op-ed discussing being a public victim of domestic violence, the case will go to trial in 2022. He also sued the publishers of The Sun in a related libel suit in England. In 2020, the High Court of Justice of England and Wales ruled that Depp had lost his libel case and that the majority of Heard's allegations had been proven to a civil standard. Chapter 1 Early Life and Ancestry John Christopher Depp II was born on June 9, 1963, in Owensboro, Kentucky, the youngest of four children of waitress Betty Sue Palmer and civil engineer John Christopher Depp. Depp's family moved frequently during his childhood, eventually settling in Miramar, Florida in 1970. His parents divorced in 1978 when he was 15, and his mother later married Robert Palmer, whom Depp has called an inspiration. Depp was gifted a guitar by his mother when he was 12 years old, and began playing in various bands. He dropped out of Miramar High School aged 16 in 1979 to become a rock musician. He attempted to go back to school two weeks later, but the principal told him to follow his dream of being a musician. In 1980, Depp began playing guitar in a band called The Kids. After modest local success in Florida, the band moved to Los Angeles in pursuit of a record deal, changing their name to Six Gun Method. In addition to the band, Depp worked a variety of odd jobs, such as in telemarketing. In December 1983, Depp married makeup artist Lorian Allison, the sister of his band's bassist and singer. The kids split up before signing a record deal in 1984, and Depp subsequently began collaborating with the band Rock City Angels. He co-wrote their song Mary, which appeared on their debut Geffen Records album Young Man's Blues. Depp and Allison divorced in 1985.Depp is primarily of English descent, with some French, German, and Irish ancestry. His surname comes from a French Huguenot immigrant. He is also descended from colonial freedom fighter Elizabeth Key Grinstead, daughter of English planter and member of the Virginia House of Burgesses Thomas Key and an African woman that he enslaved. In interviews in 2002 and 2011, Depp claimed to have Native American ancestry, stating, I guess I have some Native American somewhere down the line. My great-grandmother was quite a bit of Native American, she grew up Cherokee or maybe Creek Indian. Makes sense in terms of coming from Kentucky, which is rife with Cherokee and Creek Indian. 
Depp's claims came under scrutiny when Indian Country Today stated that Depp had never inquired about his heritage nor was he recognized as a member of the Cherokee Nation. This led to criticism from the Native American community, as Depp has no documented Native ancestry, and Native community leaders refer to him as a non-Indian. Depp's choice to portray Tonto, a Native American character, in The Lone Ranger was criticized, along with his choice to name his rock band Tanto's Giant Nuts. During the promotion for The Lone Ranger, Depp was adopted as an honorary son by LaDonna Harris, a member of the Comanche Nation, making him an honorary member of her family but not a member of any tribe. Critical response to his claims from the native community increased after this, including satirical portrayals of Depp by native comedians. An ad featuring Depp and Native American imagery, by Dior for the fragrance Savage, was pulled in 2019 after being accused of cultural appropriation and racism. Chapter 2, Career? Chapter 2 Section 1 1984-1989, Early Roles and 21 Jump Street. In the early 1980s, Depp's then-wife Laurie and Allison introduced him to actor Nicolas Cage, who advised him to pursue an acting career. Depp has also credited James Dean as the catalyst that made him want to become an actor. Depp's first film role was in the horror film A Nightmare on Elm Street, in which he played the boyfriend of the main character and one of Freddy Krueger's victims. After a starring role in the comedy Private Resort, Depp was cast in the lead role of the skating drama Thrashin' by the film's director, but the decision was later overridden by its producer. Instead, Depp appeared in a minor supporting role as a Vietnamese, speaking private in Oliver Stone's Vietnam War drama Platoon. Depp became a teen idol during the late 1980s, when he starred as an undercover police officer in a high school operation in the Fox television series 21 Jump Street, which premiered in 1987. He accepted this role to work with actor Frederick Forrest, who inspired him. Despite his success, Depp felt that the series forced into the role of product. Chapter 2 Section 2, 1990-2002, Independent Films and First Collaborations with Tim Burton Disillusioned by his experiences as a teen idol in 21 Jump Street, Depp began choosing roles which he found more interesting, rather than those he thought would succeed at the box office. His first film release in 1990 was John Waters' Crybaby, a musical comedy set in the 1950s. Although it was not a box office success upon its initial release, over the years it has gained cult classic status. Also in 1990, Depp played the title character in Tim Burton's romantic fantasy film Edward Scissorhands opposite Diane Veist, and Winona Ryder. The film was a commercial and critical success with a domestic gross of $53 million. In preparation for the role, Depp watched many Charlie Chaplin films to study the idea of creating sympathy without dialogue. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone praised Depp's performance stating that he artfully expresses the fierce longing in Gentle Edward, it's a terrific performance, while Rita Kempley of the Washington Post stated that he brings the eloquence of the silent era to this part of few words, saying it all through bright black eyes and the tremulous care with which he holds his horror movie hands. Depp earned his first Golden Globe nomination for the film. Depp had no film releases in the following two years, with the exception of a brief cameo in Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, the sixth installment in the A Nightmare of Elm Street franchise. He appeared in three films in 1993. In the romantic comedy Benny and June, he played an eccentric and illiterate silent film fan who befriends a mentally ill woman and her brother, it became a sleeper hit. Janet Maslin of the New York Times wrote that Depp may look nothing like Buster Keaton, but there are times when he genuinely seems to become the great stone face, bringing Keaton's mannerisms sweetly and magically to life. Depp received a second Golden Globe nomination for the performance. His second film of the year was Lassa Hallstrom's What's Eating Gilbert Grape, a drama about a dysfunctional family in which he starred alongside Leonardo DiCaprio and Juliette Lewis. It did not perform well commercially, but received positive notices from the critics. Although most of the reviews focused on DiCaprio, 
who was nominated for an Academy Award for his performance, Todd McCarthy of Variety wrote that Depp manages to command center screen with a greatly affable, appealing characterization. Depp's final 1993 release was Emilia Costa Rica's surrealist comedy drama Arizona Dream, which opened to positive reviews, and won the Silver Bear at Berlin Film Festival. In 1994, Depp reunited with director Tim Burton, playing the title role in Ed Wood, a biographical film about one of history's most inept film directors. Depp later stated that he was at the time depressed about films and filmmaking, but that within ten minutes of hearing about the project, I was committed. He found that the role gave him a chance to stretch out and have some fun and that working with Martin Landor, who played Bella Lugosi, rejuvenated my love for acting. Although it did not earn back its production costs, Edward received a positive reception from the critics, with Janet Maslin of the New York Times writing that Depp had proved himself as an established, certified great actor and captured all the can-do optimism that kept Edward going, thanks to an extremely funny ability to look at the silver lining of any cloud. Depp, was nominated for a third time for a Best Musical or Comedy Actor Golden Globe for his performance. The following year, Depp starred in three films. He played opposite Marlon Brando in the box office hit Don Juan de Marco, as a man who believes he is Don Juan, the world's greatest lover. He then starred in Jim Jarmusch's Dead Man, a western shot entirely in black and white, it was not a commercial success and had mixed critical reviews. Depp's final film of the year was in the financial and critical failure nick of time, a thriller in which he played an accountant who is told to kill a politician to save his kidnapped daughter. In 1997, Depp starred alongside Al Pacino in the crime drama Donny Brasco, directed by Mike Newell. He portrayed Joseph D. Pistone, an undercover FBI agent who assumes the name Donny Brasco in order to infiltrate the Mafia in New York City. To prepare for the role, Depp spent time with the real-life Joe Pistone, on whose memoirs the film was based. Donny Brasco was a commercial and critical success, and is considered to contain one of Depp's finest performances. In 1997, Depp also debuted as a director and screenwriter with The Brave. He starred in it as a poor Native American man who accepts a proposal from a wealthy man, played by Marlon Brando, to appear in a snuff film in exchange for money for his family. It premiered at the 1997 Cannes Film Festival for generally negative reviews. Variety dismissed the film as a turgid and unbelievable neo-Western, and Time Out stated that there's nothing inherently wrong with the film but that besides the implausibilities, the direction has two fatal flaws, it's both tediously slow and hugely narcissistic as the camera focuses repeatedly on Depp's bandanaed head and rippling torso. Due to the negative reviews, Depp decided not to release The Brave formally in the United States, Neither in theaters nor on home media. Depp was a fan and friend of writer Hunter S. Thompson, and played his alter ego Raoul Duke in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Terry Gilliam's film adaptation of Thompson's pseudobiographical novel of the same name. It was a box office failure, and polarized critics. Later that year, Depp made a brief cameo in Mika Kaurismaki's L.A. Without a Map. Depp appeared in three films in 1999. The first was the sci-fi thriller The Astronaut's Wife, co-starring Charlize Theron, which was not a commercial or critical success. The second, Roman Polanski's The Ninth Gate, which starred Depp as a seller of old books who becomes entangled in a mystery, was moderately more successful with audiences but received mixed reviews. Depp's third film of 1999 was Tim Burton's adaptation of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, where Depp played Ichabod Crane opposite Christina Ritchie and Christopher Walken. For his performance, Depp took inspiration from Angela Lansbury, Roddy McDowell and Basil Rathbone, stating that he always thought of Ichabod as a very delicate, fragile person who was maybe a little too in touch with his feminine side, like a frightened little girl. Sleepy Hollow was a commercial and critical success. Depp's first film release of the new millennium was British-French drama The Man Who Cried, directed by Sally Potter and starring him as a Roma horseman opposite Christina Ritchie, Kate Blanchett, and John Totoro. It was not a critical success. 
Depp also had a supporting role in Julian Schnobel's critically acclaimed Before Night Falls. Depp's final film for the year was Lasse Hallstrom's critically and commercially successful Chocola, in which he played a Roma man and the love interest of the main character, Juliette Binoche. Depp's next roles were both based on historical persons. In Blow, he starred as cocaine smuggler George Jung, who was part of the Medellin cartel in the 1980s. The film underperformed in the box office, and received mixed reviews. In the comic book adaptation from Hell, Depp portrayed Inspector Frederick Aberline, who investigated the Jack the Ripper murders in the 1880s London. The film also received mixed reviews from critics but was a moderate commercial success. Chapter 2 Section 3, 2003-2011, Pirates of the Caribbean, Commercial and Critical Success In 2003, Depp starred in the Walt Disney Pictures adventure film Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which was a major box office success. He earned widespread acclaim for his comic performance as pirate Captain Jack Sparrow, and received Academy Award, Golden Globe and BAFTA nominations and won a Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor as well as an MTV Movie Award. Depp has said that Sparrow is definitely a big part of me, and that he modeled the character after the Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards and cartoon skunk Pepe Le Pew. Studio executives had at first been ambivalent about Depp's portrayal, but the character became popular with audiences. In his other film release in 2003, Robert Rodriguez's action film Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Depp played a corrupt CIA agent. A moderate box office success, it received average to good reviews, with Depp's performance in particular receiving praise. Depp next starred as an author with writer's block in the thriller Secret Window, based on a short story by Stephen King. It was a moderate commercial success but received mixed reviews. Released around the same time, the British-Australian independent film The Libertine saw Depp portray the 17th-century poet and rake, the Earl of Rochester. It had only limited release, and received mainly negative reviews. Depp's third film of 2004, Finding Neverland, was more positively received by the critics, and earned him his second Academy Award nomination as well as Golden Globe, BAFTA, and SAG nominations for his performance as Scottish author J. M. Barry. Depp also made a brief cameo appearance in the French film Happily Ever After, and founded his own film production company, Infinitum Nihil, under Warner Brothers Pictures. Depp continued his box office success with a starring role as Willy Wonka in Tim Burton's adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It also had a positive critical reception, with Depp being nominated again for the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical. Chocolate Factory was followed by another Burton project, Stop Motion Animation Corpse Bride, in which Depp voiced the main character, Victor Van Dort. Depp reprised the role of Jack Sparrow in the Pirates sequels Dead Man's Chest and At World's End, both of which were major box office successes. He also voiced the character in the video game Pirates of the Caribbean, The Legend of Jack Sparrow. According to a survey taken by Fandango, Depp in the role of Jack Sparrow was the main reason for many cinema goers to see a Pirates film. In 2007, Depp collaborated with Burton for their sixth film together, this time playing murderous barber Sweeney Todd in the musical Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Depp cited Peter Lorre's performance in Mad Love, in which Lorre played a creepy but sympathetic surgeon, as his main influence for the role. Sweeney Todd was the first film in which Depp had been required to sing. Instead of hiring a qualified vocal coach, he prepared for the role by recording demos with his old bandmate Bruce Whitkin. The film was a commercial and critical success. Entertainment Weekly's Chris Nashawati stated that Depp's soaring voice makes you wonder what other tricks he's been hiding. Watching Depp's barber wield his razors. It's hard not to be reminded of Edward Scissorhands frantically shaping hedges into animal topiaries 18 years ago. And all of the twisted beauty we would have missed out on had never met. Depp won the Golden Globe for Best Musical or Comedy Actor for the role, and was nominated for the third time for an Academy Award. In 2009, 
Depp portrayed real-life gangster John Dillinger in Michael Mann's 1930s crime film Public Enemies. It was commercially successful and gained moderately positive reviews. Roger Ebert stated in his review that this Johnny Depp performance is something else. For once an actor playing a gangster does not seem to base his performance on movies he has seen. He starts cold. He plays Dillinger as a fact. Depp's second film of 2009, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, reunited him with director Terry Gilliam. Depp, Jude Law, and Colin Farrell each played the character initially portrayed by their friend Heath Ledger, who had died before the film was completed. All three actors gave their salaries to Ledger's daughter, Matilda. Depp began the 2010s with another collaboration with Tim Burton, Alice in Wonderland, in which he played the Mad Hatter opposite Helena Bonham Carter, Anne Hathaway, and Alan Rickman. Despite mixed reviews, it earned 1.025 billion US dollars in the box office, thus becoming the second highest grossing film of 2010 and one of the highest grossing films of all time. Depp's second film release of 2010 was the romantic thriller The Tourist, in which he starred opposite Angelina Jolie. It was commercially successful, although panned by critics. Regardless, he received Best Actor in a Musical or Comedy Golden Globe nominations for both films. Depp's first 2011 film release was the animation Rango, in which he voiced the title character, A Lizard. It was a major critical and commercial success. His second film of the year, the fourth installment in the Pirates series, On Stranger Tides, was again a box office hit, becoming the third highest grossing film of 2011. Later in 2011, Depp released the first two projects co-produced by his company, Infinitum Nihil. The first was a film adaptation of the novel The Rum Diary by Hunter S. Thompson, and starred Depp. It failed to bring back its production costs and received mixed reviews. The company's second undertaking, Martin Scorsese's Hugo, garnered major critical acclaim and several awards nominations, but similarly did not perform well in the box office. In 2011, Depp also made a brief cameo in the Adam Sandler film Jack and Jill. Chapter 2 Section 4, 2012-2020, Career Setbacks by 2012, Depp was one of the world's biggest film stars, and was listed by the Guinness World Records as the world's highest paid actor, with earnings of US$75 million. That year, he and his 21 Jump Street co-stars Peter DeLuise and Holly Robinson reprised their roles in cameo appearances in the series' feature film adaptation. Depp also starred in and co-produced his eighth film with Tim Burton, Dark Shadows, alongside Helena Bonham Carter, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Eva Green. The film was based on a 1960s gothic television soap opera of the same name, which had been one of his favorites as a child. The film's poor reception in the United States brought Depp's star appeal into question. After Infinitum Nihil's agreement with WB expired in 2011, Depp signed a multi-year first-look deal with Walt Disney Studios. The first film, made in the collaboration was The Lone Ranger, in which Depp starred as Tonto. Depp's casting as a Native American brought accusations of whitewashing, and the film was not well received by the public or the critics, causing Disney to take a 190 million US dollar loss. Following a brief cameo in the independent film Lucky Them, Depp starred as an AI studying scientist in the sci-fi thriller Transcendence, which was yet another commercial failure, and earned mainly negative reviews. His other roles in 2014 were a minor supporting part as the wolf in the musical adaptation Into the Woods, and a more substantial appearance as eccentric French-Canadian ex-detective in Kevin Smith's horror comedy Tusk, in which he was credited by the character's name, Guy Lapointe. In 2015, Depp appeared in two films produced by Infinitum Nihil. The first was comedy thriller Mordecai, in which he acted opposite Gwyneth Paltrow. The film was a critical and commercial failure and brought both stars Golden Raspberry nominations. The second film, Black Mass, in which he played Boston crime boss Whitey Bulger, 
was better received. Critics from The Hollywood Reporter and Variety called it one of Depp's best performances to date, and the role earned Depp his third nomination for the Best Actor SAG Award. However, the film failed to bring back its production costs. Depp also made a cameo appearance in the critically panned London Fields, starring his then-wife Amber Heard, which was to be released in 2015, but its general release was delayed by litigation until 2018. In addition to his work in films in 2015, French luxury fashion house Dior signed Depp as the face of their men's fragrance, Savage, and he was inducted as a Disney legend. Depp's first film release in 2016 was Yoga Hoses, a sequel to Tusk, in which Depp appeared with his daughter, Lily Rose Depp. Next, he played businessman and presidential candidate Donald Trump in a funny or die satire entitled, Donald Trump's The Art of the Deal, the movie, released during the run-up to the US presidential election. He earned praise for the role, with a headline from the AV Club declaring, who knew Donald Trump was the comeback role Johnny Depp needed. It was also announced that Depp had been cast in a new franchise role as Dr. Jack Griffin slash The Invisible Man in Universal Studios' planned shared film universe entitled The Dark Universe, a rebooted version of their classic Universal Monsters franchise. Depp reprised the role of the Mad Hatter in Tim Burton's Alice Through the Looking Glass, the sequel to Alice in Wonderland. In contrast to the first film's success, the sequel lost Disney approximately 70 million US dollars. It also gained Depp two Golden Raspberry nominations. Depp had also been secretly cast to play dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald in a cameo appearance in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the first installment of the Fantastic Beasts franchise. His name was not mentioned in the promotional materials and his cameo was only revealed at the end of the film. In 2017, Depp appeared alongside other actors and filmmakers in The Black Deandler, a short film made by a terminally ill teenager through the non-profit maker Film Foundation. He also reprised his role as Captain Jack Sparrow in the fifth installment of the Pirates series, Dead Men Tell No Tales. In the US, it did not perform as well as previous installments, and Depp was nominated for two Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Actor and for Worst Screen Combo with his worn-out drunk routine. However, the film had a good box office return internationally, especially in China, Japan, and Russia. Depp's last film release in 2017 was the Agatha Christie adaptation Murder on the Orient Express, in which he was part of an ensemble cast led by director star Kenneth Branagh. In 2018, Depp voiced the title character Sherlock Gnomes in the animated movie Gnomeo and Juliet, Sherlock Gnomes. Although moderately commercially successful, it was critically panned and earned Depp two Golden Raspberry nominations, one for his acting and another for his fast-fading film career. Depp then starred in two independent films, both produced by him and his company, Infinitum Nihil. The first was City of Lies, in which he starred as Russell Poole, an LAPD detective who attempts to solve the murders of rappers Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G. It was set for release in September 2018, but was pulled from the release schedule after a crew member sued Depp for assault. The second film was the comedy drama Richard Says Goodbye, in which Depp played a professor with terminal cancer. It premiered at the Zurich Film Festival in October 2018. Depp's last film release of 2018 was Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, in which he reprised his role as Grindelwald. Depp's casting received criticism from fans of the series due to the domestic violence allegations against him. Depp also experienced other career setbacks around this time, as Disney confirmed that they would not be casting him in new Pirates installments and he was reported to no longer be attached to Universal's Dark Universe franchise. Depp's next films were the independent dramas Waiting for the Barbarians, based on a novel by J. M. Kutzia, and Mina Mata, in which he portrayed photographer W. Eugene Smith and which premiered at the 2020 Berlin International Film Festival. In November 2020, Depp resigned from his role as Grindelwald in the Fantastic Beasts franchise at the request of its production company, Warner Brothers, after he lost his UK libel case against a British tabloid who had accused him of being a domestic abuser. 
he was replaced by Mads Mikkelsen. Soon after, the Hollywood Reporter called Depp persona non grata in the film industry. Chapter 2 Section 5, 2021-2022, Recent Activity In March 2021, City of Lies, which was originally scheduled for 2018, was released in theaters and streaming services. The same month, an online petition to bring Depp back to the Pirates franchise, begun four months earlier, reached its goal of 500,000 signatures. His Pirates co-star Kevin McNally also expressed support for Depp returning to the role. In July 2021, Andrew Levitas, the director of Mina Mata, accused MGM of trying to bury the film due to Depp's involvement, with Depp claiming he is being boycotted by the Hollywood industry and calling his changed reputation an absurdity of media mathematics. Mina Mata was released in the UK and Ireland in August 2021, and in North America in December 2021. The film received positive reviews, with multiple publications praising Depp's performance as his best in years. Depp also continues as the face of Dior's men's fragrance, Savage. Depp received multiple honorary awards at numerous European film festivals, including at the Kameramage Festival in Poland, the Karla Viveri International Film Festival in the Czech Republic, and the San Sebastian Film Festival in Spain, where Depp was awarded the Donostia Award. These awards were controversial, with various domestic violence charities criticizing the festivals. The organizers of the ceremonies released statements defending their decision to award Depp, with the San Sebastian Film Festival stating that he has not been charged by any authority in any jurisdiction, nor convicted of any form of violence against women. In September 2021, Depp described himself as a victim of cancel culture. The same month, he launched in Dot 2, a London-based sister company to his production company, Infinitum Nihil, and announced that in Dot 2 and the Spanish production company A Contracorriente Films were starting a new development fund for TV and film projects. In 2022, Depp was cast as King Louis XV in a yet untitled film about the king's life, which will be directed by French actor-director Maiwen. In February 2022, he received the Serbian Medal of Honor from President Aleksandr Vucic. Chapter 3, Other Ventures in 2004, Depp founded film production company Infinitum Nihil to develop projects where he will serve as actor or producer. He serves as its CEO, while his sister, Christy Dembrowski, serves as president. The company's first two film releases were The Rum Diary and Hugo. Depp co-owned the nightclub The Viper Room in Los Angeles in 1993-2003 and the restaurant Bar Man Ray in Paris. Depp and Douglas Brinkley edited folk singer Woody Guthrie's novel House of Earth, which was published in 2013. Chapter 3 Section 1, Music Prior to his acting career, Depp was a guitarist, and has later featured on songs by Oasis, Shane McGowan, Iggy Pop, Vanessa Paradi, Aerosmith, Marilyn Manson, and the New Basement Tapes, among others. He also performed with Manson at the Revolver Golden Gods Awards in 2012. Depp played guitar on the soundtrack of his films Chocola and Once Upon a Time in Mexico, and has appeared in music videos for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Lemonheads, Avril Lavigne and Paul McCartney. In the 1990s, he was also a member of P, a musical group featuring butthole surfers singer Gibby Haynes, Red Hot Chili Peppers bassist Flea and Sex Pistols guitarist Steve Jones. In 2015, Depp formed the supergroup Hollywood Vampires with Alice Cooper and Joe Perry. The band also includes Bruce Whitkin, his friend from his 1980s band, The Kids. Hollywood Vampires released their self-titled debut studio album, in September 2015. It featured 11 classic rock covers, as well as three original songs. The band made their live debut at the Roxy in Los Angeles in September 2015, and has since done two world tours in 2016 and 2018. Their second studio album, Rise, was released in June 2019 and consists mostly of original material, including songs written by Depp. 
The album also features a cover version of David Bowie's Heroes, sung by Depp. In 2020, Depp released a cover of John Lennon's Isolation with guitarist Jeff Beck, and stated that they would be releasing more music together in the future. Chapter 4, Reception and Public Image In the 1990s, Depp was seen as a new type of male film star that rejected the norms of that role. After becoming a teen idol in 21 Jump Street, he publicly protested against the image, and with his subsequent film and PR choices began to cultivate a new public persona. According to journalist, Hadley Freeman. Along with Phoenix and Keanu Reeves, he was part of a holy trinity of grunge heart throbs. They were the opposite of the Beverly Hills 90,000, 210 boys, or Brad Pitt and DiCaprio, because they seemed embarrassed by their looks, even resentful of them, this uninterest in their own prettiness made them seem edgy, even while their prettiness softened that edge. They signified not just a different kind of celebrity, but a different kind of masculinity, desirable but gentle, manly but girlish. Depp in particular was the cool pinup it was safe to like, and the safe pinup it was cool to like. We fans understood that there was more to Depp, Phoenix and Reeves than handsomeness. They were artistic, they had bands. And they thought really big thoughts, which they would ramble on about confusingly in interviews. If we dated them, we understood that our role would be to understand their souls. Similarly, film scholar Anna Everett, has described Jep's 1990s films and public persona, as anti-macho and gender-bending, going against the conventions of a Hollywood leading man. After 21 Jump Street, Depp chose to work in independent films often taking on quirky roles that sometimes even completely obscured his looks, such as Edward Scissorhands. Critics often described Depp's characters as iconic loners or gentle outsiders. According to Depp, his agent, Tracy Jacobs of the United Talent Agency, had to take a lot of heat over the years for his role choices, Depp characterized higher-ups at the Utah as thinking, Jesus Christ. When does he do a movie where he kisses the girl? When does he get to pull a gun out and shoot somebody? When does he get to be a man for a change? When is he finally going to do a blockbuster? Depp also cultivated the image of a bad boy. According to Everett, his rule-breaking roles matched with the much-publicized rebelliousness, unconventionality, and volatility ascribed to Depp's own personal life throughout the decade. From reports of his repeated confrontations with the police, trashing of a hotel room, chain smoking, drinking, and drug use, to his multiple engagements to such glamorous women as supermodel Kate Moss and Hollywood starlet Winona Ryder and others, we clearly see a perfect fit between his nonconformist star image and his repertoire of outsider characters. After a decade of appearing mainly in independent films with varying commercial success, Depp became one of the biggest box office draws in the 2000s with his role as Captain Jack Sparrow in Walt Disney Studios' Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. The five films in the series have earned 4.5 billion US dollars as of 2021. In addition to the Pirates franchise, Depp also made further four films with Tim Burton that were major successes, with one, Alice in Wonderland, becoming the biggest commercial hit of Depp's career and one of the highest grossing films in history. According to film scholar Murray Pomerantz, Depp's collaboration with Disney can be seen to purport and herald a new era for Johnny Depp, one in which he is, finally, as though long promised and long expected, the proud proprietor of a much accepted career, not only a star but a middle class hero. In 2003, the same year as the first film in the Pirates series was released, Depp was named World's Sexiest Man by People, he would receive the title again in 2009. During the decade and into the 2010s, Depp was one of the biggest and most popular film stars in the world and was named by public vote as favorite male movie star at the People's Choice Awards every year for 2005 through 2012. In 2012, Depp became the most highly paid actor in the American film industry, earning at best $75 million per film, and as of 2020, is the 10th highest grossing actor worldwide with his films having grossed over US$3.7 billion US dollars at the United States box office, 
and over 10 billion US dollars worldwide. Although a mainstream favorite with the audiences, critics' views on Depp changed in the 2000s, becoming more negative as he was seen to conform more to the Hollywood ideal. Regardless, Depp continued to eschew more traditional leading man roles until towards the end of the 2000s, when he starred as John Dillinger in Public Enemies. In the 2010s, Depp's films were less successful, with many big-budget studio films such as Dark Shadows, The Lone Ranger, and Alice Through the Looking Glass underperforming at the box office and gaining Depp nominations for Golden Raspberry Awards. Depp also received negative publicity due to allegations of domestic violence, substance abuse, poor on-set behavior and the loss of his 650 million US dollars fortune. After losing a highly publicized libel trial against the publishers of The Sun, Depp was asked to resign from Warner Brothers' Fantastic Beasts franchise. Many publications wrote that Depp would most likely struggle to find further work in major studio productions. Chapter 5, Personal Life Chapter 5 Section 1, Relationships Depp and makeup artist Laurie and Allison were married from 1983 until 1985. In the late 1980s, he was engaged to actresses Jennifer Grey and Sherilyn Fenn before proposing in 1990 to his Edward Scissorhands co-star Winona Ryder, for whom he tattooed Winona forever on his right arm. Between 1994 and 1997, he was in a relationship with English model Kate Moss. Following his breakup from Moss, Depp began a relationship with French actress and singer Vanessa Paradis, whom he met while filming The Ninth Gate in France in 1998. They have two children, daughter Lily Rose Melody Depp, and son John Christopher Jack Depp III. Depp stated that having children has given him a real foundation, a real strong place to stand in life, in work, in everything, you cannot plan the kind of deep love that results in children. Fatherhood was not a conscious decision. It was part of the wonderful ride I was on. It was destiny. All the math finally worked. Depp and Parody announced that they had separated in June 2012. Chapter 5 Section 1 Subsection 2 Relationship with Amber Heard Following the end of his relationship with Vanessa Parody, Depp began dating actress Amber Heard, with whom he had co-starred in The Rum Diary. The couple married in a civil ceremony in February 2015. Heard filed for divorce in May 2016 and obtained a temporary restraining order against Depp, alleging in her court declaration that he had been verbally and physically abusive throughout their relationship, usually while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Depp denied these claims and alleged that she was attempting to secure a premature financial resolution. A settlement was reached in August 2016, and the divorce was finalized in January 2017. Heard dismissed the restraining order, and they issued a joint statement saying that their relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Depp paid Heard a settlement of 7 million US dollars, which she pledged to donate to the ACLU and the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. In 2018, Depp brought a libel lawsuit in the UK against news group newspapers, publishers of The Sun, which had called him a wife-beater in an April 2018 article. The case had a highly publicized trial in July 2020, with both Depp and Heard testifying for several days. In November 2020, the High Court of Justice ruled that 12 of the 14 incidents of violence claimed by Heard were substantially true. The court rejected Depp's claim of a hoax and accepted that the allegations Heard had made against Depp had damaged her career and activism. Following the verdict, Depp resigned from the Fantastic Beasts franchise, after being asked to do so by its production company, Warner Brothers. Depp sought to appeal the verdict with his lawyers accusing Heard of not following through on the charity pledge, and that the pledge had significantly influenced the judge's view of Heard. In response, Heard's legal team stated that she had not donated the full amount yet due to the lawsuits against her by Depp. 
Depp's appeal to overturn the verdict was rejected by the Court of Appeal in March 2021. The Court of Appeal did not find the argument that the charity pledge influenced the outcome convincing, as the judge in the trial had reached their verdict by evaluating the evidence related to the 14 alleged incidents of violence, the issue of the donation was not part of it, but a comment made after the verdict had already been reached. In addition to suing the son in 2018, Depp also sued Heard for defamation in Virginia, U.S. In early 2019 over an op-ed she wrote about her experiences of leaving an abusive relationship, which had been published by the Washington Post in December 2018. Depp alleged that Heard had been the abuser, that her allegations constituted a hoax against him, and that as a consequence, Disney had declined to cast him in future projects. In October 2020, the judge in the case dismissed Depp's lawyer Adam Waldman after he leaked confidential information covered by a protective order to the media. Following the verdict in Depp's lawsuit against The Sun the next month, Heard's lawyers filed to have the defamation suit dismissed, but Judge Penny Oscorite ruled against it because Heard had not been a defendant in the UK case. In August 2021, a New York judge ruled that the ACLU must disclose documents related to Heard's charity pledge to the organization. The defamation case against Heard is scheduled to go to trial in Fairfax County, Virginia in April 2022. Heard has also countersued Depp in August 2020, alleging that he had coordinated a harassment campaign via Twitter and orchestrating online petitions in an effort to get her fired from Aquaman and L'Oreal. Chapter 5 Section 2, Alcohol and Drug Use Depp has struggled with alcoholism and addiction for much of his life. He has stated that he began using drugs by taking his mother's nerve pills at the age of 11, was smoking at age 12 and by the age of 14 had used every kind of drugs there were. In a 1997 interview, Depp acknowledged past abuse of alcohol during the filming of What's Eating Gilbert Grape. In a 2008 interview, Depp stated that he had poisoned himself with alcohol for years. In 2013, Depp declared that he had stopped drinking alcohol, adding that he pretty much got everything could get out of it. Depp also said, I investigated wine and spirits thoroughly, and they certainly investigated me as well, and we found out that we got along beautifully, but maybe too well. Regarding his breakup with longtime partner Vanessa Paradis, Depp said that he definitely wasn't going to rely on the drink to ease things or cushion the blow or cushion the situation. That could have been fatal. According to his ex-wife, Amber Heard, Depp plunged into the depths of paranoia and violence after binging on drugs and alcohol during their relationship in 2013 to 2016. In a 2018 Rolling Stone profile of Depp, Reporter Stephen Roderick wrote that he had used hashish in his presence and described him as alternately hilarious, sly and incoherent. Depp also said that the allegation made by his former business managers that he had spent US dollars per month on wine was insulting because he had spent far more than that amount. During his 2020 libel trial, Depp admitted to having been addicted to roxycodone, and alcohol as well as used other substances such as MDMA and cocaine during his relationship with Heard. Chapter 5 Section 3 Legal Issues Depp was arrested in Vancouver in 1989 for assaulting a security guard after the police were called to end a loud party at his hotel room. He was also arrested in New York City in 1994 after causing significant damage to his room at the Mark Hotel where he was staying with Kate Moss, his girlfriend. The charges were dropped against him after he agreed to pay US dollars in damages. Depp was arrested again in 1999 for brawling with paparazzi outside a restaurant while dining in London with Parody. In 2012, disabled UC Irvine medical professor Robin Eckert sued Depp and three security firms, claiming to have been attacked by his bodyguards at a concert in Los Angeles in 2011. During the incident, she was allegedly handcuffed and dragged 40 feet across the floor, resulting in injuries including a dislocated elbow. She argued in court that, as the security guard's direct manager, Depp failed to intervene, even though he did not take part in the battery. Before the case went to trial, Depp settled with Eckert for an undisclosed sum, According to TMZ. In April 2015, 
Depp's wife Amber Heard breached Australia's biosecurity laws when she failed to declare her and Depp's two dogs to the customs when they flew to Queensland, where he was working on a film. Heard pleaded guilty to falsifying quarantine documents, stating that she had made a mistake due to sleep deprivation. She was placed on a $1,000 one-month good behavior bond for producing a false document, Heard and Depp also released a video in which they apologized for their behavior and urged people to adhere to the biosecurity laws. The Guardian called the case the highest-profile criminal quarantine case in Australian history. In March 2016, Depp cut ties with his management company, the Management Group, and sued them in January 2017 for allegedly improperly managing his money, and leaving him over $40 million in debt. TMG stated that Depp was responsible for his own fiscal mismanagement and countersued him for unpaid fees. In a related suit, Depp also sued his lawyers, Bloom Hergott, in January 2017. Both lawsuits were settled, the former in 2018 and the latter in 2019. In 2018, two of Depp's former bodyguards sued him for unpaid fees and unsafe working conditions. The suit was settled in 2019. Also in 2018, Depp was sued for allegedly hitting and verbally insulting a crew member while under the influence of alcohol on the set of City of Lies. Chapter 5 Section 4 Political Views Depp stated to the German magazine Stern in 2003 that America is dumb, is something like a dumb puppy that has big teeth, that can bite and hurt you, aggressive. Although he later asserted that the magazine misquoted him and his words were taken out of context, Stern stood by its story, as did CNN in its coverage of the interview. CNN added his remark that he would like his children to see America as a toy, a broken toy. Investigate it a little, check it out, get this feeling and then get out. Depp has also disagreed with subsequent media reports that perceive him as a European wannabe, saying that he liked the anonymity and simplicity of living in France while in a relationship with parody. Depp became a US resident again in 2011, because France wanted him to become a permanent resident, which he said would require him to pay income tax in both countries. In November 2016, Depp joined the campaign in prison for art to call for the release of Ukrainian filmmaker Oleg Sentsov, who was being held in custody in Russia. At the Glastonbury Festival 2017, Depp, criticizing the US President Donald Trump, asked, when was the last time an actor assassinated a president? I want to clarify, I'm not an actor. I lie for a living. However, it's been a while and maybe it's time. He added, I'm not insinuating anything. The comment was interpreted as a reference to John Wilkes Booth, the actor who assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Sean Holt's Claw of the Secret Service told CNN they were aware of Depp's comment, but that or security reasons, we cannot discuss specifically nor in general terms the means and methods of how we perform our protective responsibilities. Depp apologized shortly afterward, saying did not come out as intended, and I intended no malice. Chapter 6, Filmography and Accolades Chapter 7, Discography Chapter 7 Section 1, Sources